So let's take a look at the Pukekohe Park Raceway, and it's a fantastic layout in that it's only 11 turns and 2.9k, but it's got so much character. It's fast, it's flowing, and for just over half of the lap, you are on full throttle. 255k is the top speed. The lap record is Mark Winterbottom with a 376. So it's a great layout. Right that man there. there has a lot of work to do. Jamie Winkup with Less We Forget on a Anzac commemorative weekend. There's been a big change in rhythm as everybody gets their head around thinking what happens now in this race number 13. We've got settled with the notion of 100 kilometre races, one on Anzac Day, two yesterday, but now we double the distance. That's the helmet cam on the right side of Rick Kelly's helmet. Great qualifying performance together with his brother. There's a scenario in the points chase for the championship coming into this 13th race. And Mark Winterbottom now has the lead. Craig Brown's been leading. And here's your Fuso starting grid for race 13 at Pukekohe Park Raceway. The front row of the grid, what a great job again for Scott McLaughlin. Three pole positions. Tim Slade, his best qualifying performance for the year so far. Van Gisbergen's been strong all weekend. So has this man. Mark Winterbottom, he'll take some beating today. Chas Mostert, great response. Dave Reynolds has also popped up there. Three cars from FPR in the top six. Caruso, the best performance for Nissan so far this weekend. And Wink Up, we've just explained that he's got work to do. Great job, Todd Kelly and Rick Kelly, to be in nine and ten. Lee Holdsworth, five manufacturers within the top 11 cars. There's Courtney and Coulthard. They've had good race pace, qualified too far back. Craig Lowndes at 15th. I can't believe his, his weekend. Will Davison there alongside him. Jason Bright also really struggling and qualifying alongside there. Jack Perkins, James Moffat and Scott Pye, 19 and 20. Robert Dahlgren has been fast on occasion, but not good enough. And Garth Tander would be very unhappy on the second last row of the grid in 22nd position. Dale Wood and Russell Ingle round out the field. So it's pretty tight. There's not much in terms of speed. And give it a bit of jandle. That's the message from the Kiwis to Scott McLaughlin, our pole sitter. His second pole of the weekend here. We've got it covered for you in terms of onboard. This is Scott Pye, Wilson Security Racing, driving the Dick Johnson Racing Ford Falcon. His teammate is AWOL, David Wall, involved in an incident, unfortunately, on Friday. Here's James Courtney. They've been having lots of little sensitivity issues with the rear end of that car. I'll come back to that. Tim Slade on board with him. It's a season best qualifying performance for Tim. The passion out there from the Ford fans as well. David Reynolds, Botlow Ford Performance Racing Ford Falcon. We spot him in the green car. We'll ride with him. Scott McLaughlin, here he is preparing for the start. Larko? Yeah, buddy. just down here at the start, grid, mate. Well, you know yourself, this is going to be a cracking race. And if you're not sure of that, go back and have a look at yesterday's telecast. We're talking half a second between the whole field here. I think so much of this, though, is going to be about the start. You've got to beat your teammate. That's an important thing. We've talked about double stacking. You've got to avoid that. But at the front here, there's two distinctly different bits of tar. The inside, where Scotty McLaughlin is, is actually the worst. And in each of the starts, the... Oh, hang on. Slade's waving his hands here. there. Look at this. He's waving his hands, he's stalled the car. Sorry, Larko. Yep. Sorry, Larko. The clutch is gone in in that car of Tim Slade. He's waving his hands. He's got no clutch. So they've aborted the start. Sorry, Larko. Yeah, they've aborted the start because of that. So he's waving his hands. The Super Chief Auto Commodore clearly... From the front row of the grid, it is dangerous to have that car parked there. No, no, I got nothing. And they're going to... Monitoring that conversation, that was Tim Slade talking to Terry Kerr. And Tim Schenken just said, can you have your drivers wave your cars off from the grid? There's Tim Slade waving. So there are marshals adjacent to each of the drivers. And Tim has looked across and signalled. So the clutch is cool. I'd suggest, and he's got it away again. So an aborted start procedure. We'll go through all that with you again. Sorry to interrupt there, Larko, but there was a bit going on. We could see people waving. There were frantic radio messages. Yeah, that's, that's good advice because sometimes it just overheat. 
triple plate carbon clutch in these cars. And if Tim uh, was riding it too much in that warm-up lap, it may have put excessive temperature into it. And a lot of time with carbon clutches, you actually have to slip the clutch on the warm-up lap to have the temperature come up so that the clutch so normalises. Yeah. So if you just leave the clutch cold, you can't really tell what bite it's got. So Tim would have warmed the clutch up, and then by the time he got there, maybe it was, it was over temp. So a very smart decision from the officials then, because we've seen some catastrophic starts when you've got a car parked at the front. Scopey down, Skipper Chief Adrian Burgess, uh, just in the middle of a discussion with the team. What they're doing at the moment is they're just, uh, obviously the clutch has returned, but they want to make sure that it's there, that it's functioning the way that it should. They'll check that before the last turn. Now, if he's got a problem, they told him to get into pit lane. They, they won't do that to the start again. Yeah, and if you look over my shoulder here, Brett, you see they're over on grid number two. See the fluid over there now? That's unusual. That's further back than the... Because the coolant area of the car is up further forward than that. That's back near the clutch area. So I can't tell now if that's hydraulic fluid or what it is from here. But that's an interesting little observation. And I was just saying there before on the start, you can see here there's two distinctly different lines of tarmac here. And it's way grippy on the left-hand side. Never everyone on the left-hand side in position two has won the start all weekend. Now, it's going to be interesting to see if... Timmy Slay gets around to good up because Scotty McLaughlin has certainly put himself in a good position now. OK, so uh, Tim Slade has actually come He's into the pit lane. So I think that little telltale that you identified down there, Larko, well is up, contributed well in some form. We'll come back to that and find out as the field now falls into position. So that leaves 23 cars. We lost David Wall Friday. We've lost another car now just prior. What a shame for Tim Slade. Season best performance for him after a great qualifying. And how's that vacant spot on the front row? Makes life a little easier for McLaughlin. It is a gift for Scott McLaughlin. It's also a bit of a gift for Mark Winterbottom. With that space. Green flag. That's 15,000 horsepower in the background. Pukakoe is alive to the sound of 23 V8 supercars. Very good job, Winterbottom. Watch oh. Reynolds try to force a gap. Mostert runs with him. Van Gisbergen protecting second. The two Pepsi cars are side by side. How good was Dave Reynolds then between the two teammates? There was bump and grind between the two teammates. McLaughlin has control up the back straight. And look at the congestion in the mid-pack. We're riding with Fabian Coulthard. He's behind Holdsworth there in the front right-hand corner of screen and Van Gisbergen protecting from Reynolds. McLaughlin's got a margin. This is the new hot spot on the track, turns five and six. Craig Lowndes has been having problems there. Here comes Winterbottom on the inside of Reynolds. No, Winkup, audacious move down the inside on Mostert. On cold tyres, quickly slams the Red Bull Holden down the inside to try and make a spot. But he's going to end up having to run side by side at 10. That's awkward. He's still hanging in there. Caruso wants a part of it. That's great driving, Neil. That was a, a real lunge, a real dive there. The two of them got through. Looks like Craig Lowndes is already in. So is Will Davison. So they've dived into the pits in terms of strategy. This is a crucial one for both those guys. There they are. Lowndes and Davison. Cars triple eight and nine. They've taken themselves out of the traffic equation. They want to remove one of these requirements to dump some fuel. Lance had a power steering problem in that earlier qualifying. Had a quick word to him between quali and the race. Said the mistake in the gravel trap was all him. But they just can't get on top of the car at the moment. The stability in the rear of it's not what he wants. Oh, a problem for Winkup, who's overshot down at the hairpin. He might cede the spot back to Mostert, and he has. He's lost that spot that he worked hard for three kilometres earlier. Just like he locked the brake and just ran wide. Don't know whether it was the rears or the front, because it had a little bit of smoke with it, so sometimes hard to tell there as to what starts the drama. On board now with Jamie. See Mostert just there in front. That was very willing between... Mostert, Winterbottom and Reynolds at the first corner. Reynolds got the best run of all three FPR cars. This is a good start also for Nissan Motorsport. Caruso 7, Rick Kelly 8, Todd Kelly 9. Todd's qualified 9, three occasions so far this weekend. Said 
in his V8 supercar career, which is hundreds of races. He can't ever recall stalling back to back, and he did that in the earlier races this weekend. But he's away cleanly, and he and Rick were debating how they'd handled the start and the push and shove between the brothers in the early laps. <laughs> They've managed to sort it out between them, and they're currently chasing Michael Caruso. Here is Courtney. Lee Holdsworth on the outside here. That's Nick Percat in the foreground. Car triple two. Coulthard in there as well. That was good driving as Courtney dived down the inside of Holdsworth. Just check this out now. It was a bit of a bubble by Mark Winterbottom. Great start there by Dave Reynolds. He gets between them, and there's a bit of bump between them. So you can just see that little, almost stalled there for Mark Winterbottom. You'll see on your right in a second, a green falcon. There it is. So great start. And he was alongside Mostert afterwards. This is the brake lock. So it was a front brake lock, but just in the background there from Wing Cup. And off he goes. He just had to clear the brake and run wide. Yeah, that's the inside front. Runs wide, and then Mostert grabs that position back. Yeah, boys, as uh, Timmy Slade just comes into the pit lane, they're putting tyres on. It'll be interesting to see. They're not going to be able to do anything with this when they drop the car. It'll be interesting to see because when he started from the exit of pit lane, there was another puddle of fluid on the ground there. Put my finger down. It's definitely hydraulic-type fluid, so it's always got a master cylinder gone. Yeah, and they asked him to knock it out of gear. Yeah. Uh, he's starting on the starter. Yeah, they knocked it out of gear as he arrived just so it's set up there in neutral. And then what he's done there, folks, is dropped it on the road in first gear, then wound the starter and wound it into action. Hard way of doing it. Makes the starter motors very hot, pretty hard on the electrical system too. Wouldn't want to be doing that all day somewhere like Bathurst. You might get away with it today. This is down at turn four. We're looking at Fabian Coulthard from the rear bumper of James Courtney's car. I was going to make a comment about that prior to the race. It's Rob Star, Rob Star on the radio speaking to James. James saying he's in the traffic. He's behind Lee Holtzman at the moment. They've been fiddling around with this car and they can't quite get it right at the back end. So they dropped the rear roll centre and that gave it a heap of understeer, meaning it wasn't turning to his liking. So then they lifted the rear roll centre for qualifying and James said when you turned it in it was like a flag, really awkward. So they've returned it to its spec for race 11 where James was running very well. So we'll see whether that gives him the yield he's looking for. He's 12th at the moment, Courtney. They're chasing McLaughlin. It's a 1.1 second margin. Kiwi over Kiwi, McLaughlin versus Van Gisberg, and then David Reynolds. How are the three Ford Performance racing cars all running door handle to door handle through turn one off the start? I reckon Tim Edwards aged about five years in that process. You're not wrong. It was a great start by Dave Reynolds. He certainly got the best start of the front six or seven guys. So McLaughlin from Van Giersberg and Reynolds, Winterbottom, Mostert, Winkup, Caruso, Rick Kelly, Todd Kelly, Nick Perkett. That's your top ten. And just here in front of Fabian, Fabian's currently 13, is Lee Holdsworth and Courtney in 11 and 12. So pretty willing there in the middle part of this field. Jason Bright, this is on board now with James Courtney. We're just maybe having a bit of a hand signal there to Fabian. Yeah, I'm sure what that was all about, but some form of acknowledgement. But I think it was peace. We might have had a... Yeah. I think yeah. it was peace. Was it peace? Might have been a bit more animated <laughs> if there was a bit more depth in that meeting, but we'll work it out later. So looking rearward again from James's car, final corner, turn 11. Are these fellas all ready? Just to give you an idea of how tough it is when you're back in the pack, we know they've got quick cars. We've seen evidence of it all weekend, but they're already eight seconds away from the lead of the race. So they've basically dropped on average about a second per lap just because they give away space at the very start. Then they're tangled in traffic. They're all chasing Scotty McLaughlin. This is race 13, the V8 Supercars Championship from Pukekohe. And it's Volvo leading the way. Scott McLaughlin, Kiwis again running one, two. They didn't manage to quite finish in that position yesterday but it's a long way to go Fabian Coulthard here we're looking at in 13th place and under fire from his own teammate Jason Bright who is down the inside it's been a tough weekend for Coulthard it was strong here last year and these guys are fighting in the mid pack they're both from Brad Jones Racing in Albury in the background James Courtney peeling off to pit lane Scott High here will get a run on 
Fabian Coulthard. He'll drag him right across to the edge of the road. But Pye's up for the challenge. Gets on through. 13th place to Dick Johnson, racing driver. McLaughlin leads by 1.3 seconds to Van Gisbergen. And how would it be if he could claim a victory for Volvo today? It's 28 years to the day. Look at this. This is a Volvo. This is Robert Dahlgren, the second car. It's had a spin on the exit of turn four. Just about to say, it's 28 years to the day since Volvo last won in this championship. It was with a Kiwi as well then. Robbie Francevic, a Kiwi leads with Scott McLaughlin. Courtney will rejoin. Remember, cars have to take on 120 litres of fuel, how they do it in what order or what split is up to them. You'll notice a change on our lap counter too. The extra formation lap will count as one lap of this race. So the race has been wound back to 69 laps. Wing Cup is into pit lane. Perkett's in as well. James Moffat is in there too. We'll see a two pit stop race for this race, but there might be, if there's a late safety car, someone might decide to pit again. Nice little warning there. Not allowed to spear though. Get those rear tyres spinning. Lap nine. Give me a champion pit lane. The Volvo of McLaughlin continues to lead the way. Let's rejoin Mark Skay for your content. Good drive so far, mate. Welcome back to Pukekohe Park Raceway. And we're seeing more people peel off and grab their first dose of United E85 fuel. Nick Perkett and Jamie Winkup have come in. Lee Holdsworth is now in together with James Moffat. James Courtney came in as well. He's gone down a lap. In fact, he's now battling with these guys here on screen. Oh, was that, was that a little bit of contact there between Winkup and Courtney? It must have been very close. So such is the transit time to get into the pit lane, take the service and get back out again. These guys are going down the lap in the process at the moment. The danger there is if the safety car comes out. And this is teammate on teammate. And Bright got by Coulthard, who's having a battle at the moment. And then that exposed him to Scott Pye, who forced the issue down into turn one and made it stick. It was a nice job. Fabian's, in particular, by his own admission, weak down at turn five and six mark. And this is Robert Dahlgren on the exit of turn four. We had a big spin. I think a lot of people in the pit lane initially reacted to what looked like a heap of smoke and trauma down there. There's a lock break here for Fabian as well. So he's gone straight ahead. So I was about to say, he's really struggling at turns five and six. I went and spent a little bit of time with him between qualifying and the race to understand what the issue was, as now Mostert and Todd Kelly come in as well. They're taking their first stop. So a lot of those guys, Neil, they went a lap down. So Perkat, Courtney, Winkup, they all went a lap down. So the danger with that, when you make an early stop and the leaders are effectively in front of you by more than a lap, is if the safety car comes out, you're gone. So they need to be very careful at the moment that they get back on strategy with McLaughlin and Van Gisbergen. It's pretty wild down there when Courtney drove around the outside of Winkup on warm tyres and then Perkat was just, he jumped Wink up in the pit stop. So there's some fuel strategy playing out here also. 75 odd litres of United E85 ethanol going in there. Refuel rate's about 3.7 litres per second. This is Todd Kelly, car number seven. Jack Daniels racing. Very encouraging qualifying in these last three races for him. They showed real promise in practice one and in qualifying one. One of the issues for them this weekend has been trying to chase the track as it's evolved and keep up with it. Such is the tiny gap between everybody. It's not hard to be on the wrong side of the half second that we're seeing with everybody in qualifying. I talked before about the cumulative races coming into the weekend for Todd. Some 422 V8 supercar races. I said to him before, I reckon by now you have the start sorted. I bet you like that uh, comment, did he? Would have responded well. Well, they were into a heavy briefing, the Kellys, when I got there, because Rick was discussing the fact that the first four years of his racing career, he spent it in the same pair of Explorer socks. I went, what's that got to do with anything? Other than the fact that they probably stunk. 
Yeah, and weren't vibrant. <laughs> so anyway, those guys at the moment. Ricky's currently sixth, doing a good job. He's seven seconds off the lead of the race, and he's matching his teammate, Michael Caruso. They're matching the pace also of Mark Winterbottom, who's had a very strong weekend. McLaughlin leads 1.7 seconds. He's just done a one minute 4.2. Two tenths quicker than Shane Van Gisbergen. David Reynolds is still there in third as this is Scott Pye on Jason Bright down at the hairpin. And a bit of push and shove there. You can see the door, Jason Bright's car, the driver's door. Just caved in a little there, but Scott did give him the space on the exit, and that's something they spoke about in the driver's briefing. Look at our Shannon's telemetry there of James Courtney just sneaking over 250 kilometres an hour. It's very wind direction sensitive. Been a little bit of variation in the conditions here. It was quite wet and cool early in the weekend. It was quite warm on uh, Friday, Saturday. A little bit cooler today, but beautiful clear skies. The wind has picked up a little. Take a look at this compo through these bumps. We keep on making reference through nine and 10. Check this bump out here. That's Percat in front. Uses all the suspension travel. That's why the blue smoke comes off the bodywork of the car on the tire. And then the bumps down into turn one. This is 255 kilometres an hour as our maximum speed on qualifying. It's not quite that in the race. And then mid-corner speed through there, up and over this kerb. One of the things that I found interesting that we spoke about, Mark, was that Percat, who's in the heavy haulage Australia car in front, wasn't using the kerbing down here at turn five. We're about to land down there. We're looking from uh, James Courtney's car. So let's see whether or not he has to use it this time or not. But in qualifying, he stayed right off it. It proved to be quite quick for him. Uh, he's used a little bit of it there this time. So just changing his technique slightly. But quite a number of guys are approaching that complex yeah, with very are. different theories. And we saw it yesterday as Percat has a big lunch here at Holdsworth at Turn 8. Done. He did a good job because he actually held the car tight at the exit to give Lee room. So he knew that there was going to be contact if he kept on with the trajectory that the car was on. So that was actually quite a good manoeuvre, not just to get the pass made, but also not to make heavy contact. Dave Reynolds has taken ground off Winterbottom in the last couple of laps. He's right up behind him. So McLaughlin continues to lead. Van Gisbergen, Winterbottom, Reynolds. We're on board now, right in behind. Forward. 10 in-car cameras covering this complete field for you. David Reynolds probably hasn't gone as well this weekend as I expected. He had some engine dramas earlier in the weekend, had an engine change on Friday night. And McLaughlin being held up a little bit between Craig Lowndes and Will Davison. They went in, remember? And uh, race director Tim Schenken has just issued the directive for blue flags for the preceding cars, so they've got to give some space to the race leader. We're asking the question, who's your favourite to win the Jason Richards Trophy? And the numbers are still in favour of Mark Winterbottom here. So Lowndes has got to clear the race leader, and so does Will Davison. That's a rarity, isn't it? When Craig Lowndes has to sidestep with a blue flag. So he's been lapped effectively. So remember, he come in... Very early, Lowndes and Davison did the same thing. That was basically on lap one. And he's pressed on. He's driving very well, Scott McLaughlin, because he, there was no fuss there. He reported it in. He made sure the officials waved the flags, and he got on with it. Will Davison has actually done the second fastest lap of the race. So his speed is very good. He's on a 3.95. In fact, sorry, it's the fastest lap now. Versus McLaughlin, who's done a 398. There's an outstanding blue flag here for car nine as well, Will Davison. He doesn't, he's actually not close enough to warrant no. right at the moment. He probably was early on, but I'm not sure if I, if I were Will and the car's five car lengths behind me, I'd be in a real hurry to do anything at the moment other than press on. No way. Exactly. And especially wave your flags, I'll wave back to you. <laughs> Very true. But if you look at his pace, his pace is very good. Yeah. So that's an interesting one. So sorry, Neil. On the last lap, McLaughlin did a 485 and Davison did a 475. So he's five car lengths in front and he's going faster than that's Scott. Really so mate, don't, don't obey the blue flag. Rick Kelly and Garth Tander into the pit lane. Here's Rick, Jack Daniels racing. 
is Garth in the background. Had a power steering problem in the Holden Racing Team car in qualifying. With a few power steering launches this year through the field. So there's the flow rate for the United E85 down in the bottom left-hand corner of screen. First gear selected, pit lane, pit, uh, speed limiter engaged for Rick, so they quickly get to their 40 kilometres an hour. Clean set of Dunlop boots on it. Back to Tanda. Waiting for a light signal on that fuel rig. When you're in the car, the heat builds up quickly and it seems like a long, long time. Caruso and Bright are now also in. Here they are. There's Michael. Been doing some reporting for us again this weekend with the Anzac Challenge. And there's Jason Bright. Seems like a long time ago that he won the Friday race. Yes. Tough weekend just trying to get that car back in the zone. Been in the wars a little yesterday. I was talking to Brad Jones about it earlier. Another yeah, very on the inside of Boston, up the inside of Dave Reynolds. Boston, very aggressive. And here we go. Here's a couple of the lead guys: Van Gisbergen and Winterbottom. So the stays out. We're going to tweak that mirror for you too, buddy. We're also going to just get Mark Winterbottom's side mirror tweaked back into position as well, car number five. This only combo I was making the point with Brad that he, he said that a couple of times that Jason Bright's sectors were good enough to be in the first three or four cars, but just didn't end up being able to put the lap together. They're all being cautioned about a very slippery pit apron. The concrete doesn't have near the grip of the asphalt. Remember, they haven't been doing pit stops this weekend other than their normal entry and exits through each of the sessions. There's Kiltard in as well, car 14. Outstanding blue flag still for car 888. Lowndes would not be enjoying this. Go, 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 go. Look at down the inside of him, car 222. There goes Mark Winterbottom. Clean, easy departure for him and Shane Van Gisbergen. Remember, he was second and hunting McLaughlin. So it's a changeover. Correct. So Winterbottom in that stop, they put less fuel in that car than Van Gisbergen. So it's all about strategy. So Van Gisbergen. Got, and Van Gisberg has come out behind Mostert there as well. So they've put a lot of fuel in that car, which means that later on they'll have a shorter fill. So we won't be able to give you the real position to these cars until we get a little bit further into the race. But right now, that is a strategic move by FPR versus Van Gisberg. So Frosty's just done his stop, the Pepsi Max entry. Fresh tyres on that car, he's come out behind McLaughlin Stowe. It's still being sorted uh, on our computer. There are five cars that are still to take some service in the pit lane. There's the confirmation on the Coats Hire leaderboard for you. McLaughlin, Reynolds, Pye, Perkins and Ingle. Quick break, we'll be back. And the leader's in. Scott McLaughlin pitting the Volvo. There were five cars left that have yet to visit pit lane. The number is now four because here comes the leader, the Kiwi. David Reynolds takes over out front. And the Gary Rogers Motorsport Volvo Polestar team will service this car. So many viewers on Sky Sport in New Zealand who are keen to see this car win this race. Let's see what he can do. We're at lap 20 of 69. No problem with that left front being really slow because the fuel flow is the governing factor. The voice you're hearing is Jeff Marshall, the car controller, just standing there to the right of the shot. So let's see how much fuel they put in that car in comparison to the rest that he was fighting with in the early stages of the race. It'll all wash out. He'll be back to the lane later for some more fuel. 40 kilometers per hour. There's the end of the speed zone. Go. Watching down the front straight to see who's coming. There's the margin to Mark Winterbottom. 
That's Will Davis in the Erebus number nine car behind. McLaughlin on Cole Dunlop trying to get them up to pressure. Reynolds is down. In pit lanes. This is a really jumbled race. There's Van Gisbergen. Perkat. Lee Holdsworth. Courtney. Winkup. Lowndes. Caruso. The Nissans. Todd and Rick Kelly. Coulter. Bright. Here's Reynolds. Jack Perkins staying on the road. He's the only car not to be in pit lane yet. Give you an idea of the fuel flow here. All okay, of the fuel fillers are restricted in terms of their flow rate. Take in on a drink of United E85. Look good. Clear pit lane. Russell Ingalls in the kicks okay, up the other end. Go, 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 go. in the background. And Reynolds, the Gold Coast winner from last year. This is the Bathurst winning car. The Mark Winterbottom and Steve Richards drove to victory in October last year. It's now the Bottle O car. Look at this. Rick Kelly and Fabian Coulthard side by side in the fight for 16th place. And there's a little bit of a rub. This is on. This is close. New fastest lap of the race to Mark Winterbottom. It's heating up at Pukekohe. Let's rejoin Mark Scaife and Neil Crompton. We're on lap 22 of 69. The race has been shortened by that one lap because of the additional lap at the start of the race when we had the trouble with uh, Tim Slade. New fastest lap of the race, Mark Winterbottom, and here is the stop for McLaughlin that you saw as we were going to the break. Pretty straightforward for him. Jack Perkins remains the only car out there to take a stop, and after McLaughlin did this stop, he's gone out very quick. Fresh tyres on the car and a new load of fuel, and he's recording very quick speeds at the moment, although the fastest lap of the race is Winterbottom, and how's this exchange for 16th and 17th between Rick Kelly and Fabian Coulthard turns 10 and 11, and no one wanted to blink there. That was close. That was very close. Yeah, but just as we saw the pit stop for Scott McLaughlin, I mentioned earlier about after his pole position, he went and thanked everyone, congratulated every single person from the team. It comes from the top. After that pit stop, Gary Rogers went and patted all the guys in the back, the guys and the girls, and said, first class stop, let's keep it calm. It really does show how much of a team effort this is. And he's just recorded a 1 minute 3.7, Scott McLaughlin, new fastest lap, so that's a couple of tenths quicker than Winterbottom. And a new record. Fastest lap. 3.76, Mark Winterbottom last year, 2013. 3.72, now for McLaughlin. So that's the fastest lap on the new configuration racetrack that we've seen. We're on board with this helmet cam of... Rick Kelly, as I said yesterday, if you've got any drivers with vertigo, then you better go and get a cup of tea or a nice quiet ale because this is pretty wild. This makes Luna Park look like a walk in the park. Jack Perkins, that last car remaining to take the first stop, has now come in, by the way, in the Geldwin entry. Final corner here for Rick. That's the voice of Eric Pender in the background. Telling him that Scott High is in pursuit. Rick's currently 16th and he is chasing at Jason Bright. That's Brighty in the Team BOC entry up at turn four there. Look at this. Lost it on Davis and this argument is for third spot. And Shaz nearly overshot. Remember that last year in a Pepsi Max Ford, Will Davison won a race here. Now to the final corner, so lost it. Makes it stick. Nice job. Aaron Noonan just said that that's the car. The car that he was in, actually. So in that very car, Will Davison, previous Ford factory driver, now driving in the Erebus Mercedes-Benz E63. Right there, battling with Mostert. Behind is Van Gisbergen. Behind is Dave Reynolds. So McLaughlin leads by 1.77 seconds. Will Davison's done a nice job here. I suspect there's some strategy in this too, Mark, because he qualified 16th, so if they chose to try and fight for a good track position, they can do that by not having to put as much fuel in. Remember, they must deliver 120 litres of United E85 to these cars in the stops, which Mark Larkin detailed in the Penrite Proper Racing Line. However, how you do it is up to you. You can fiddle it any which way you want, so... 
Well, I think what they've done down at Erebus Motorsport V8 is they've played a game to try and buy some track position for Will. But he's got a quick car. We saw that earlier when he had a blue flag outstanding for him at one point, but the leader wasn't really making much of an impression. Speaking of the leader, here he is, 1.5 seconds. And sorry, Neil, the other thing that out of that that's really important is that Davison come in the same time as Lowndes to be effectively on that same strategy. Lowndes is 12th, Davison's 4th. Marco? Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, sometimes it is good strategy, but the danger is, as you know, if we get a safety car and everyone barrels in the pit lane and you're the guy that's got to do the long stop, that's where it really hurts and that's always got to be factored in. Yeah, look, that will play out, I agree, mate. And one of the we need to really have a close look at those front guys as to who is going to stop for the shortest period of time because as we do our calculations, um, there's clearly now between McLaughlin, Winterbottom, Mostert, Davison and Van Gisbergen quite a lot of strategy difference, especially Will Davison in that lead five uh, front runners. Look at this, Coulthard's got a run on Lowndes. He's trying to make it work on the inside of five. Craig can't do anything about it. So has to surrender that spot. This is an angry pack. It's got Todd Kelly, Fabian Coulthard, Craig Lowndes, Jason Bright, and Rick Kelly. Now Bright down the inside of Lowndes. So Lowndes is wounded at the moment. Just nothing like enough pace in that car. He looked pretty disconsolate when I caught up with him after qualifying. So they're still chasing the car. Can't figure it out. Said it doesn't actually feel as bad as it probably looks, but it's just not seeing the numbers. Remember that you've only got to be away just a tiny fraction on lap speed, and this is what happens to you. Now Rick Kelly slides down the inside on the run to turn one. So with a 1.4 second lead, Scott McLaughlin cruising along nicely at the moment. A little bit of subtle pressure from Mark Winterbottom. The Fords are second and third. They're chasing the Volvo. Van Gisbergen Ford, then David Reynolds. And we're talking about Craig Lowndes. He's just told Jeremy Moore he's race engineer, I've just got no turn. He's struggling through the corners. And it sounds like he's running on an older set of tyres, so that won't be helping the situation. He runs 16th. We're looking back from Rick Kelly at Craig, who has never, ever won a race at Pukekohe, a place that's just not meshed with him over the years. Had a pole here. In fact, it was Triple H's first ever pole some nine years ago, but he struggled this weekend. He just needs to stay in the game and get as many points as he can, sidestep any drama. Because come the end of the year with the championship and the points are all that out. It's not so much the races that you win when the days go right, it's when the days aren't going right. They're the ones that define whether you're the champ or the chump. And now he's under fire from Scott Pye. McLaughlin out front, 1.3 seconds from Mark Winterbottom. Most at third, Van Gisberg and Reynolds, Davison slipping back. Perkat, Holdsworth, Courtney. Wing Cup sits 10. And this is Scott By who was absolutely motor down the back straight here. He got a good run off turn four, lining up the guy who drives for Triple Eight. Pyre Fulham. Triple Eight driver by association. He drove for Lucas Dumbrell's team last year in a Triple Eight Commodore. Taken under the wing of Roland Dane in recent years, formerly in the British Formula 3 Championship. And now he lunges through on Lowndes, who's just had to sit and wait and watch as all these guys charge up by. To give you an idea, he was running with Will Davison earlier. Davison is 13 seconds down the road and sixth in the race at the moment with everyone having completed one pit stop. This is Van Gisbergen, yesterday's second race winner. In fourth spot, Reynolds, much better run for the bottle O forward. He's needed to step up and start delivering. Winterbottom's been getting results. Reynolds is starting to prove menacing. McLaughlin, though, the Volvo, the Jandal man, he still leads the way. Mega Wall's got it covered, the ITM 500 Auckland. Up at the top left of the screen, you can see Shane Van Gisbergen doing battle here with David Reynolds. They're arguing over fourth and fifth. We've got curb cam, race control cameras, and onboard cameras every which way around this three kilometre circuit. And look at Reynolds having a hungry look down the inside on Van Gisbergen. That was a very late manoeuvre. Lucky to get away with that one. Sometimes it can also tear the under tray under the front spoiler, which generates a lot of downforce when you run across that kerb on the inside that Dave Reynolds just did there. And it was very careful to slow it up and not make contact with Van Gisbergen. You see there the, the amount of time that he's gaining. 
haven't heard Todd Kelly sounding a bit animated in the background a radio message earlier as well so I think that pack that we were focusing on before there's been a little eruption in that gang no surprise Craig Lowndes has come into the pits he's having a real battle he hasn't ever won a race here in a V8 Supercar Championship event at Pukekohe as Reynolds has another sniff down the inside he get it done which is unbelievable isn't it yeah I mean Craig Lowndes we said it yesterday it's just extraordinary to have a guy like that who hasn't won a race at this place Brett Let's go for you, Lanzi, on his way in. In fact, he's pulled up the pits here now, marked up and quickly. Sato, a um, bit of concern about Lanzi and fuel? No, uh, fuel's all good. It's just uh, was a lack of pace. So uh, we tried to look after the, the rear tyres for this race and gave the car a bit too much understeer. So uh, enabled to, to get the car to turn, he had to chew up the rears. So hopefully now we'll give it a bit of a tune-up and uh, have a bit more of a rocket ship. All right, quick update on Jamie Wincup for us as well. How do you manage these two drivers coming towards the latter stages of this race? Yeah, so obviously tough weekend for us. We've had some sort of semi-OK -okay, uh, results, but not what we need. So Jamie's still in an all right position. He put more fuel in to begin with. So hopefully uh, if it plays out uh, in our hand, then that fuel should skip a few spots. Good luck, mate. Thank you. Thanks, mate. That puts Craig Lowndes to literally the bottom of the field because even though we talked about uh, fewer cars at the start, Tim Slade did get that car going again. So. They'll have put a little bit of preload into those rear springs on Craig's car to try and get it to turn. One thing he has been good at is he has even outshot so many others as now Reynolds. I'll come back to that. Get goes down the inside of Van Gisbergen. That was actually a nice move. Shane did a good job to sidestep, but he got such good drive here that Van Gisbergen could argue the point. No, that was clever. He had to lift. Come out of the best thing to do. Exactly. And you're on the outside there at 10. Um, I was going to say that. Lowndes had a remarkable finishing record, Mark. The last time he didn't finish a race, that is Craig Lowndes, this is uh, Scotty McLaughlin, was in Tasmania when he had that dust up with Will Davison. Remember where he ended up down in the gravel trap? That was back in 2012. So Lowndes has been doing a great job ever since then. So a little bit of the venting system in the Volvo. Gives him a little cuff under the ear, under brakes into turn five. He won't fall asleep. He'll be enjoying that. That is a real frustration and an inconvenience. We'll take a quick break from Auckland, come back. If that's the worst problem Scott McLaughlin has today, then it's not such a bad day, but it's got to be distracting as that ducting flaps around inside the car. This is Chas Mostert, he's third. That point about Craig Lowndes, he's gone 78 straight championship races by finishing. That's two years worth of racing which is quite unbelievable. It's an impressive streak. He's never done that to that level in his career before. But this is a young guy who is on the rise. Chas Mostert's had a tough first couple of events in the Pepsi Max car. He drove for Dick Johnson last year. He was effectively leased out to Dick Johnson's team hey, mate, from FPR, mate, who have run him previously in the Dunlop series. This is better. We've seen some better speed from him this weekend. The podium finish. Adam DeBore on the phone there, down the back straight. Clear road in front, clear road behind. Winterbottom is 9.7 seconds in front. He, in turn, is right with McLaughlin. Eight tenths behind the Volvo. Lap 33, so approaching half race distance. Final race of the weekend, and here is the fight I spoke about. The hometown hero, McLaughlin. He lives in Melbourne now. He spent some time on the Gold Coast, but he's a Christchurch boy. And Mark Winterbottom defending the honour for Australia on Kiwi home soil. That time McLaughlin, 104.21. Winterbottom, 104.26. Nothing in it between these guys. And Winterbottom, the championship leader after a great run yesterday. Still chasing that elusive first V8 Supercars great championship. Job, he finally got that first Bathurst win last October. Win at Winton, good speed this weekend, the Factory 14, starting to really get on a roll. This is Michael Caruso, we're watching him from James Courtney's Commodore in ninth place. Lap 34 in race 13, here's Neil Crompton to Mark Scott. It's lap number 34 of a 69 lap race, just a little under 200 kilometres for this final of the four events that have been run here at Pukekohe Park Raceway. 
We are looking rearward from James Courtney's car. He's got a big battle on his hands because Michael Caruso's on the charge. And that's Caruso sneaking by. James tries for the crisscross on the exit. He gets very good drive and in fact pulls it off. Well done. And Will Davison back into the pits, by the way, in car number nine from position six. That was nice presence of mind by Courtney then. Big dive from Caruso. And as he got into the corner, he was going to run a little bit wide. James turned back the other way, put it in first gear, settled the car so that both rear wheels drive very well off the corner and was able to get back by Caruso. Rihanna? Yeah, we just saw Will Davison come into the pit lane. He, remember, he stopped on the first lap, so it was a very short stop to get that clear traffic that he wanted to bring come forward in this race. So this is going to be a much longer stop. Before he came in, the chief uh, crew mechanic, Ben Croak, had all the guys and the girls in a huddle and said, this is where we're at. This is, let's update what's happening between both cars. This is the strategy. Because we know in these races, the strategy changes on the hop. So they need to update everybody in the team so they all know what is going on. Thanks, Rihanna. In fact, yeah, good observation. I completely overlooked that earlier when I uh, talked about Davison and his strategy. So he was one that came in early. Look at this. That's the bump at turn 10 that's upset so many cars this weekend. And see that ongoing oscillation of the car. And it was right there in that very car where he was side by side, Chas Mostert, with David Wall on Friday. And that big leap over the curb resulted in the two of them having a hip and shoulder contact. And uh, the Wilson Security Ford Falcon ended up in the wall as a result of the momentum's enormous, huge speed through there. So check this out. Those lap times that you have on screen there between the two guys in the first and second, trading punches for fastest laps and there's nothing between them. Mark Winterbottom just edging up. We said a while ago he had about one and a half second deficiency to McLaughlin. Now he's right back up to 0.54 on this lap. A 438 and a 428 for the two lead cars. So very fast. These guys are the class of the field at the moment. Van Gisbergen will be in contention later on also, so will Mostert and Dave Reynolds. So Perkat, Holdsworth have come into the lane as well. Courtney vacates. Another quick break. It's tight at the top. It's 0.6 of a second between McLaughlin and Winterbottom. And McLaughlin at the moment leads the Jason Mem uh, Richards Memorial Trophy by just one point. Yep. And a 20 year old Kiwi has shown that he's not afraid of racing with the stars of V8 Supercar yep. Racing. This is Lee Holdsworth in the second Erebus Mercedes. Help me, help me yep. A long drink of United E85 Wait, for this car. He pitted no lap so nine, so go, go, go. he rejoins. Wait, There's he Nick Burke at HHA go, 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 Commodore go, go, from Walkinshaw Racing. He will squeeze out just in front. And roll back into okay, the fast remember, lane. So green tires, green tires. Remember the plan electronically line. controlled right 40 kilometers per hour first gear. And to go. Long way down the lane. There's Van Gisberg. There is the other Erebus car of Will Davison. He started from 16. Holdsworth started from 11. James Courtney was keen to clear the Merck and to put himself into the dirty stuff, out through the grass, back on just in front. He was so keen to get in front of Holdsworth there. He was coming out of the pits and not get blocked behind him while he was on cold tyres and trying to get the Mercedes up to speed. And he sent himself off the road. Wink up in, reigning champ. Okay, Calm and control. No Truck point in rushing here. the tyre change because the fuel feed uh, is governing how long the pit stop takes. Nothing Nothing around, around, mate. He was in on lap eight. He's in at go, the go, end go, of go. 38. And rejoins. Cold, hard tide. Cold, hard tide, mate. Cold, uh... Here's the fight though at the front. This is where Winkup would rather be. McLaughlin, lap 39. Winner bottom all over him. They're going head to head. Volvo V Ford in the V8 Supercars Championship in New Zealand. Lap 39 in race 13. Look at this battle unfolding here between 
car 33 and 5. McLaughlin versus Winterbottom. Australia versus New Zealand. Volvo versus Ford. And Frosty's having a look once again. He's slowly been dragging the Volvo back. And that margin now is so tight. We're on the 39th lap of 69. We're past the halfway mark. And it is incredibly tight between these two in terms of lap speed at the moment. And he's under pressure. And look at this. The Jason Richards Trophy leaderboard. It's one point, as I said, going to the break. McLaughlin over Winterbottom. So this is a very important phase in this race for these guys. They're battling for the JR Trophy. They're battling for a race victory. And they're battling for every point they can grab in the championship. And we continue to ask you the question, who's your favourite to win the Jason Richards Trophy? Well, at the moment, the numbers are still running in favour of Mark Winterbottom. But it's line ball. The Kiwis are responding because even as I spoke, Scotty McLaughlin was a fight back. And that's what's going on here at the moment. He's trying to do everything to fight back and push back on this pressure that he's receiving from Winterbottom. It's very, very tight here. It's interesting, Richard Holway, Scott McLaughlin's engineer, I asked him whether they changed the car much between qualifying and the race. And he actually made reference to you, Mark. He said, well, you know, what, what we did in the early days is we tended to make the change to the car between those two phases. He said, we're finding with this car at the moment, if you try and tune it back as a race car, it hurts him too much. Look at this replay down at turn one a little earlier on the outside of Holdsworth. James Courtney on cold tyres trying to do what he could to not cede a position. So he's in, out in the dusty, dirty stuff. Best thing to do, straighten her up and blaze through the green. He gets back on and holds his position. Can you believe that? That was, well, we saw him do it around the outside with, uh, I think it was one of, I think it was Mostert earlier and around the outside there there's all the marbles offline and that was a massive dive for, for Courtney to get away with it it's great car control from her he's closer this time winner bottom up here at turn five but the interesting thing for me is they're not really doing much with this car and we're hearing more and more about all this very high level of sensitivity in tuning the rear of the cars. This is the move that Winterbottom made yesterday down the inside, that positive move under brakes, squaring the front of the car up. There's his teammate Chaz Mostert in, Rick Kelly's in as well. He's very good at that up there, so the brake performance of the car is terrific for Winterbottom into that eighth corner at the hairpin. So we're just doing the numbers on how much fuel the guys have got to put in. And there's not much in it. We think there's about two seconds of fuel difference between McLaughlin and Winterbottom. So at the moment, the way that Winterbottom has come up, he's just forced his way, hasn't he? He's just, just a little bit by little bit by little bit. Ah, they're, they're pitting Scott McLaughlin this lap. I can hear Richard Holway calling him this lap. They're, they're losing some margin here at the moment, so they're responding accordingly. Van Gisberg and Todd Kelly are in. And they'll have a look, I reckon, at uh, whatever's going on with that ventilation. Yeah, and exactly at the same time, mate, they've rolled Winterbottom's tie down a bit late, Neil. So it's game on. This will be good. Yeah, so the right thing to do here is to respond with the leader. So Winterbottom has a bit of a look, but expect to see both these cars in. That'll be a call that FPR makes on the run, but you can expect 33 in. Yes, they're both in. There's Gizzy on the right-hand side of screen. So this is a pressure stop, the big lock up from McLaughlin to get the speed under control. That was dire. It certainly was. There were all the wheels locked to get it stopped. Okay, mate, the leaders are hit, the leaders are hit. And Frosty made ground. Yeah. Got it, I've got it. He can read the car number on the rear bumper. Oh, he's bumping him actually. And they're going to fix that dark door, so they're gonna have a quick look inside the car. Yeah, that'd be a low priority though. Uh, Scott said he's got it. So in the pit, he's been able to grab that duck and hook it back to what is the fixture on the roof. So he's fixed it for himself. So well done, Scott. He obviously couldn't do it at race pace, but he can do it at pit lane. So the last stop for Winterbottom was lap 18. Last stop for McLaughlin was lap 20. McLaughlin's in the fast go, lane. Go, 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 Out goes got Frosty. Him. Got him. He's got him. Nice work by the boys at FPR. A little bit of difference in the fuel levels. And released. Well, this sets up a fascinating finale. And Todd Kelly, black flag, pit lane penalty. Car number seven, and uh, he's exceeded the pit lane speed limit. So Todd Kelly, sadly, is going to have to do a run through the lane. 
So Winterbottom here mind. just trying to get something. I could be the mirror. Half a chance that he's asking for the mirror to be put into position. It might seem frivolous, but it's important go, when you're trying to go, pass or first. being passed to understand where the opponents may be. Oh, oh David Reynolds has fired off down here at one. So he's rejoining. Oh, he's got a proper left rear corner of that car. Okay, mate. Yeah. Remember, we saw Jack Perkins in strife down there yesterday at one. Had a wild ride. Initially, the damage the tyre. So this just happened all on his lonesome, or was there something else that's attached to the story? Oh, needs to be careful here. Got to be really slow now. Oh, he's he's never going to pull up. That was clever. He's a bit worried about his target speed there for a moment. Now the hard part for Dave now is to make it safe to get across to the right and not to beat it to death. So if you go too quick, it just thrashes everything under the bodywork there. And then subsequent damage means you spend longer in the pits. Let's have a look what happened here. Uh, this is in... Uh, oh, no, it's done it away. It's done it now. Oh! You could not have a worse spot anywhere we drive for that to happen. So it's popped the left rear when they've come around the left of nine to 10. He's turned it into 11 and is right out in Gary Rush speedway mode as he is right now. Oh! It, he must have gone super close to giving that fence a nudge then. That is very wild. If you had to get your order book out, get a purchase order and write, I want to have the biggest catastrophe that I can have at Kukakoe, then you'd buy it right there at turn 10, wouldn't you? And then the second one would be at turn one. Wow, he survived to tell the tale. Extraordinary, David Reynolds. Unbelievable. We'll take a break, we'll be back. And the other major problem was where it happened, just past pit entry, so he had to do a whole lap with a punctured tyre. There's Tim Slade. Remember, he started from pit lane. He was due to start on the front row. So we're left with four cars that have done one stop. Uh, Coulthard, three Perkins, Ingle and Wood. They're still out there. Winterbottom, here he is. He's fifth, but he's the effective race leader. And he's looking the goods. What's McLaughlin got for him in this run home? Chas Mostert is next on the road, but he's some nine seconds behind. Van Gisberg and Caruso and Bright. That's the top 10. Winkup is 12th. Lowndes is 20th. Wow. It's an interesting change, isn't it? 45 laps down. There's Robert Dahlgren rejoining. He just wants to get out of the way of Scott McLaughlin. His Volvo teammate slips on by. This is where the fight is. These are the guys who will duke it out for the race win in this 13th race. Might be lucky for someone, might be unlucky for someone. Great, great job, buddy. Good rhythm, mate. Flaming Coulthard was leading there for a moment in the Lockwood car. He's now in the lane. It's been a disappointing weekend, a really let, big letdown for him. Repeat, so much mate. expectation, some positive results coming in. Good. good run at Winton, home soil, where he was strong hey, last year. Go to 20 on that rear Just bar, hasn't 20. correlated. Hey, hey, mate, nice here. Yeah, Exit's going to be a little, little bit tight. tight. Uh, and that 14 seconds to fuel. Chris Clark on the radio there for the Lockwood car. Ingle now takes the lead. Coulthard and Perkins in the pit lane. And that leaves Dale Wood, the only other car. This is a great shot from inside the wheel well. Lap 47, Russell Ingle leads the way, but really this is a fight between Mark Winterbottom go, 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 go. and Scott McLaughlin. Approaching the one hour mark. Let's rejoin Mark Skate for Neil Crompton. Around Courtney and Rick on the way up. As we went to the break, Fabian Coulthard was the leader, but yet to do his second stop. He's now done that, and so has Jack Perkins. Welcome back to Seven's coverage of the ITM 500 Auckland. Don't forget the Townsville 500. The V8 supercars return to Reed Park in tropical North Queensland. July 4 through 6, tickets are on sale now. There's a whole bunch of support categories. The Saturday night concert. Ticketech.com.au is the website to go to. And of course, you can also find out a lot more information on the V8 Supercars website as well. So Coulthard rejoins with cold tyres but warm brakes, and he's trying to defend here from James Courtney. Remember, they were in a battle right at the very start of the race, and James will get down the inside here. He'll have a little bit more grip, or will he? 
Yes. Had to argue the case, but so he got it yeah. done. It was pretty close, wasn't it? Actually, I thought there was going to be contact as they turned into turn six. Fabian was pretty good then. He, he could have served Courtney. Paul Bart's heart rate there, 145. Pretty would have been a little higher at the peak of that exchange because he came out of the pits on cold tyres, as Neil said, and you've got to be very careful with your brake positioning into turn five. He's had some monster moments. There's, well, there he is, across the grass. James now getting a run on him, and some of the moments that Courtney's had at turn one have been extraordinary. So we're on board now with Fabian. There's James. Very interesting exchange, that one. So Fabian's uh, currently on for his worst race result of the year. He's had uh, a couple of 11th so far, but he's currently sitting uh, in 14th, and we're still waiting for a couple of them to process their final stop. Ingle and Wood, here is Russell Ingle, right on cue. Repair Management Australia, Holden Commodore of Lucas Dumbrell Racing. Been a little bit quiet this weekend, Russell. He was a little bit noisy at Winton. Unfortunately, that cost him some money. $15,000 for his little spray towards race control. And uh, 10000 of that was suspended, but he is lighted to the tune of $5,000. And that's the reason why he's just sitting a fraction lower in the car than the last time that we saw him. The wallet's a bit thinner. I haven't actually seen much of him this weekend, but uh, I thought that the speed that we've been seeing from him in the early rounds, Jens, has been just fantastic. Yeah, he's been very strong. His racing is always good. So as you can see on the coats, leaderboard, winner bottom leads, currently from Dale Wood, who hasn't made his second stop. So the gap to McLaughlin is actually two seconds in third. Boston, Van Gisberg and Caruso Bright. Dale Wood now coming in. That uh, cleans it all up so that Winterbottom's got the control of the race again over McLaughlin right at the top on the computer. On the subject of uh, seasonal results, Craig Lowndes in his current position at the moment, 20th. That'll be, if he stays there, his worst of the season as well. The uh, worst numbers we've seen from him so far, you've got that 16th. There's Betty, team owner, Erebus Motorsport, Betty Clemenko. He had a 16th at Winton, then he was 16th earlier in the weekend here, race 11. Uh, but remember, he came into the event here in New Zealand as the championship leader. He's not going to depart New Zealand when he goes through passport control with that same leadership. And that's a frustration. Very surprised by the, the pace or lack of it in car number 888. Amazing. A lot of homework required to try and recover that. So the field has now settled after their second stop. Winterbottom, McLaughlin, Mostert, Van Gisberg and Caruso, Bright, Davison, Winkup, Percat, Rick Kelly. On here with Scotty Pye from the 14th. He's just in behind Lee Holdsworth. They're all talking about just how critical it is to get qualifying spot on right at the moment because when you start talking about, oh, that was a little mistake. Oh, it was because there was some help. Then whether he actually copped a bump then, Scott Pye, or whether or not he just ended up wandering a little wide, but that was Garth Tander that you saw That's the glimpse of. Go, and there is the race leader, two point, uh, correction, there's second place, 2.4 seconds behind the race leader, Mark Winterbottom. And a bit of jandal cam, just to see how busy it is around here as a foot skill. And the little piece of material on, the, on both pedals are designed to keep the temperature down to contain the temperature through the pedal itself on both. So you don't melt your jandals. You don't melt your jandal, exactly. And this is full throttle now. This is a great shot of McLaughlin with a little lift, a little break. We're going to stay on board for a full lap and just have a look at this footwork of this very talented young New Zealander. A little dab of the brake. It's very bumpy here. Just trail the brake, back the gear and break it hard across the curb. Just very gentle, back to second. Gentle on the throttle. Watch his footwork, beautiful throttle modulation. And that progression is vital to keep the tires in good nick. Not too much wheel spin. And watch this for a hard brake. Little dab to get the pedal quality up. And then hard on the brakes. Back to second gear. Trail the back across the curb. Get a little change of direction, a little dab of the brake again. 
Have a look at the throttle. Beautiful. This is the real test. Watch this. This is the slowest corner. He's using second. That's clever, not first. Really gentle with that throttle progression. It's a great technique. He's driving very well. He's been very fast all weekend. He's very committed. He's very brave. And his ability to make the car flow and keep the mid-corner speed up is one of the best in terms of technique in the whole field. Here's the co-tire leaderboard showing you the margins between Mark Winterbottom, Scott McLaughlin, Chaz Mostert. Looks like Ford Performance Racing are working on another double podium. We'll take a quick break. The last of the day. Be back. Seventeen laps to go, and it looks like second place is the go for Scott McLaughlin. He doesn't have the speed to get to winner bottom. That Ford has been fast yesterday, fast again today. No threat to McLaughlin is Mostert, 9.9 seconds behind. But this large New Zealand crowd would love to see this kid get up there and snatch a win on home soil and join the likes of Greg Murphy and Shane Van Gisbergen to it. One of V8 supercar race here at Pukekohe, the only international venue for V8 supercars in 2014. Here is another of the Kiwis, Fabian Coulthard. He's the one who has been down this weekend, but he's still fighting. The fight here is with Rick Kelly for 10th place. The viewers on site, Sky Sport, keeping an eye on the Kiwis right throughout the course of the weekend. A big g'day to everyone watching too on Speed TV Australia and Fox Telgo through V8 Superview. But look at this for a fight, Rick Kelly. On the fringe of the 10, Nick Perkat's just down the road. Wink up his eight. He's just trying to grab whatever he can grab and go back to the drawing board before we head to Barbagallo Raceway in Perth. So we go to the other side of Australia. It's a long trip. These cars will be all air freighted home. And the teams will head back to their respective workshops in Melbourne, the Gold Coast, and for Brad Jones's team in Albury Wodonga. A very tight turnaround to get them in the trucks and then take them all the way across the Nullarbor to Western Australia, Garth Tander's home track at the moment. The number two driver for the Holden Racing Team sits in 14th place. So Winterbottom has completed 54 laps. His margin is going out. He's pulling clear of the Volvo, 3.46 seconds. And this has been one of the best starts to a championship for a few years for Ford Performance Racing. Historically, they're strong for the first half or the second half. They've kept the fight to Triple Eight for the last few years, but they just haven't had enough. It looks like all their eggs are in the winner bottom basket this year because Mostert is still young, still emerging, still learning. But positive signs for him too this weekend. He might be able to steal some points away from Frosty's rivals over the course of the next few rounds. Here is the factory forward. It leads the way. 15 laps to complete here in New Zealand. Race 13 of the V8 Supercars Championship. It's Dale Wood there in the Adbam entry. It's a Brad Jones Racing Holden Commodore. He's got a little bit of bodywork damage there in the right rear corner of that car. They're monitoring that at race control at the moment. Welcome back. Pukekohe Park Raceway in the closing stages now of this right. fourth and final event for the ITM 500 Auckland. And that's the race leader tucked in behind. He'll be cautious when he sees any car anywhere near him at the moment that might threaten that position. There's the current provisional position with the Jason Richards Memorial Trophy. And at the moment, yeah, mate, race control is finally issued. So at the moment, uh, Mark Winterbottom's got a margin there over Scotty McLaughlin, Shane Van Gisberg, and so it's the Aussies over the Kiwis at the moment. And uh, you heard that confirmation back there from Grant McPherson, the engineer to Mark Winterbottom this year, that race control are aware of the problem with Dale Wood's car. And uh, they've also issued a blue flag, meaning there is a quicker car behind and you need to yield. So that's been shown and Dale's done the right thing. A little scare here on Friday on Anzac Day when a rear anti roll bar broke on that Holden Commodore and speared the tyre and threw him off the road. As you saw there before with David Reynolds when anything happens here it is spooky because the consequences are enormous if something goes wrong. It's just so fast isn't it? It's just bumpy, it's fast, it's got everything going just under 170 kilometres an hour as a speed average around here. It's the third quickest average of all of the tracks on the tour. So we've closed out the vote. Who's your favourite to win the Jason Richards Trophy? 
and it went to Scotty McLaughlin in the final analysis. Only 3% in it, but it looks like Mark Winterbottom might have this job done at the moment, but we've learnt over a long period of time with this business, don't get too excited too quickly. You never know. Because weird things happen with tyre behaviour, traffic. Chrysler Penn is safety car is a possibility at any stage, and we came into the event with about a 76, 77 percent probability of its appearance, and it's been out there a bit over the weekend. There's Jason Bright, his sixth. It's been quite a reasonable recovery for him so far today after a scrappy day yesterday, Larko. Mate, I've managed to get myself over here to turn 10, 11. Now, this is a fantastic part of the circuit. I spoke yesterday about the commitment required at Pukakaui. So the cars come up through there. 10, turn 10, fourth gear. It's about 210 kilometres behind me. Now, right here at turn 11 after the bump at this apex, it's 190 kilometres now. Now, the tricky bit here, when you're down low here, you can't see over the brow here. So right there, if you listen, they start to put on 100% throttle. As a driver, I cannot tell you how hard it is at Pukakaui to do that when it's blind, to nail a throttle and hope that you've got it right. And you see a lot of them run out onto the grass out there. That's not because they don't know how to drive the car or where to point it. It's because they made the commitment here to carry them all the way down the straight. And if you just have a little bit of throttle as you're going over the hill there, that will cost you all the way down there. So it takes great commitment, great bravery. And funny thing is, you usually see the best guys going off in the grass. Best seat in the house. Thanks for that update, Larko. It's a great spot down there, isn't it? Well done. Just uh, steps back over the old guardrail. See the old guardrail there to the right yeah. of the new concrete barriers and debris fences that are down there. So in the old days, if you got it wrong, speaking of getting it wrong, trouble here between Percat and Winkup. They're arguing over eighth and ninth, and they've both found a way to go straight on at turn five. That's what I was saying before about things changing rapidly in this business. They lost two spots. It was Rick Kelly and Fabian Coulthard have been able to sneak by. So Winterbottom, McLaughlin, Mostert, Van Gisbergen, Caruso, Bright, Davison, Kelly, Coulthard, Winkup. That's your top ten. Perkat right in behind Winkup. We saw that drama. And Rick Kelly's done a good job to maintain good pace through this race. Same with Caruso. So this is a little bit of the explanation. Both of them just locked the rear wheels. They both decided to go through the little shortcut. And then, oh! <laughs> Jamie bumps the Pepsi Max tyre bundle and Nick makes contact with him after that. So that was just a little bit, uh, a little bit clumsy. There wasn't really anything bad about all that. It was just a couldn't quite get a turn when he thought he was going through the little Safeway car park entry. Couldn't get through there and almost come to a stop. That's pretty. We covered Percat back to 10th and 11th. <laughs> Never any shortage of opportunities in this caper to create weirdness. <laughs> and, Very uh, true. <laughs> just looking up and down the order here at the moment, uh, a couple of notables. Michael Caruso is currently fifth, Mark. And uh, if he stays in that position, that's a season best performance for him. We're riding here with Jamie Winkup. See that mid-corner instability in turn one there for him, the Red Bull Racing Holden Commodore. You go through Whoa. this hugely fast right-hander at one, and then you've got to make two big direction changes. And then get the thing set up nicely with nice drive off turn four in second gear. It's about 90-odd kilometres an hour. You saw Jamie have a bit of a glimpse there. At Nick Perkat once again as they just continue this little arm wrestle. It's been a great weekend for Perkat. Solid points. We saw evidence of great speed from him at Winton. Turning around some difficult runs in the early part of the season. Mark Larkham had a word to him earlier in the weekend on the grid. And uh, he said to me after Friday that they basically pulled the car out of the aeroplane and it's been quick. They made some very small changes just to get it to his liking probably chase the track condition a little bit over the weekend but they haven't had to go through wholesale setup changes and that's always encouraging he's got alex somerset with him who was with Good kelly Good racing with factory nissan team last year well he almost didn't because alex had a fair dose of food poisoning in the early part of the week as, as well so he managed to drag himself out of the sick bed to come and say oh just leave it alone and drive it yeah <laughs> which worked i'll bet you um that craig and Russell are having a ball at the moment. That's 19th and 20th they're battling for. Both cars 
have not looked like they've been competitive all weekend. Both of them have been around so much. They're such competitive guys. They would be hating where they are in this field and also just thinking to themselves, why are we back here? This is just the cars are not... Oh, loud! Big brake lock-up. It's got to go off. They gathered it up. It's just terrible. I've never seen... Craig for the whole weekend have so much drama to one spot. It's almost like they've got a problem that they haven't found. Oh, Russell makes the big desperado move around the outside and has him covered. Keep in mind this little world championship here is for 19th and 20th. Now coming into this weekend Russell Ingle 550 V8 supercar races make that 553 and for Craig Lowndes 516 plus three, 519, so there's more than a thousand V8 supercar races between these two guys, and neither of them at the moment have been able to come up with a way to engineer cars that should take them a little further up the field. It just goes to show how tricky it is, and set these cars slightly wrong, or just don't quite catch that setup, and you can pay a big price. Here's Fabian Coulthard, he's ninth. He's continuing this very impressive and consistent run in the championship this year. And he said openly to me that on the days where I know I can't win, I've just got to try and bank those points. And he and Phil Keeper are really frustrated between qualifying and the races. They try and figure out ways of coming up with the right combination to make that car work and make Fabian happy. He's done a very good job. He's been quiet, but if you're going to be quiet, at least make sure you grab some of those points. It's really turn five and six that have been the biggest worry for Fabian. His helmet cam and Rick Kelly's here at turn four now. Second gear, you can see it on the dashboard. And you'll see kind of head just leans forward a little bit. Eric Pender just doing a bit of coaching. So he just looks down, watches those shift lights, has a think about any adjustments within the cockpit. And then picks his braking reference. Look at Fabian, big lock up and straight through at five. He was in the background pops out the other side so after talking about consistency and cleanly getting the job done and just trying to get it home without too much trauma Fabian makes a mistake when he can least afford it and that's probably put a little mark on those tires as well and that illustrates what I spoke about before that it's in that area of the racetrack five and six where he's really been getting some pain so 22 and 2 Courtney and Tanda 12th and 13th for the Holden racing team Again, how tight is it when James Courtney can be on pole for race 11 and then he's effectively fighting in the midfield now in this race? It just shows also that without the old rear roll centre adjustment, which last evolution of cars prior to the, this next generation car of the future cars, they were able to wind the rear stiffness of the car through the race and were able to tune the cars at pit stops. Well, now they can't do that. So when you line up at the start of the race and if the car's not quite good enough you have to live with it for the day and this is a big part of the tuning that you were talking about earlier where normally you'd make a big change from qualifying to the race some guys aren't changing very much at all so for these guys they've all weekend they've been at the front of the back the front of the back they're not even anywhere near where they should be been a very popular weekend here for motorsport fans, and we've seen a terrific crowd in attendance Friday, Saturday and Sunday, 128,225 confirmed for the ITM 500 Auckland. So uh, special thanks to all the Kiwis who've come out and we really hope you've enjoyed the show. Enormous amount of merchandise out there and lots of passion. And people talking about it downtown, and posters and commercials and things going on, lots of activations around town. It's been a great week. and. Uh, Really thrilled to come back to this venue last year and it's working well. I reckon that's one of the biggest stories of the change of the car you were alluding there uh, to there a few moments ago, Mark, that not being able to make those tweaks on the run. In years gone by, you could have some pretty ordinary cars that with a couple of sweeps in the rear roll centre position would cover a multitude of sins, but that just doesn't happen now with the change in the architecture of the rear of the car. Independent rear end suspension where it was a live rear axle previously. <laughs> now that's uh, on uh, one of the boys' helmets inside uh, Brad Jones Racing at Lockwood Racing, Fabian Coulthard's crew, Super Kiwi. Ro Roland Dunn, you've made a reputation for setting the highest standard in the pit lane. By those standards, it's a very ordinary weekend. 
Um, I guess we've got an obligation to say to our viewers what, and your fans, what's going on? What's happening? Where's the performance gone this weekend? Well, I don't know where it's gone today. To be honest, the weekend uh, um, up until this point wasn't too bad. We'd been at the front end of the grid. We, yeah, we were leading on Saturday, on Friday with an issue, um, and we, yeah, we had a podium on Friday and two fourths yesterday. So we weren't miles away. I don't know what's happened today, frankly. Uh, we've gone backwards. Um, Craig, yeah, should have been up where Will Davidson is from a poor qualifying. He should have been in the top six, seven cars or so. And Jamie, obviously, we expected to be faster. I don't know, but all leaves cancelled, and we'll sort it out. It's a tough gig, isn't it? It always is. Thank you. And uh, you can tell by the tone and the intent there that uh, all leave is cancelled. Do not wander in and ask for a couple of days away from the office there in Brisbane at uh, 888 Race Engineering. Both the guys have had some power steering trouble this weekend, Red Bull Racing Australia. And we've seen a lot of Craig Lowndes off the rope. We've seen both the boys run wide at the final corner. Now, all he's doing at the moment is just trying to grab points. In 20th position, Craig still generates 45 points. And Jamie in 10th position will still grab 78 points. So grab them while you can, but it's a long way from what we've come to expect from these fellas. Well, we know when we get to Sydney, those points will be vital. So we think about it through the year, and if you just do a good job, and on the bad days, you get the best yield you can possibly get. It makes a profound impact on your final championship position. And what a great job today, Compo. Jason Bright has gained 11 positions in the race. Will Davison, as Roland said, come in at the same time as Craig Lowndes, but Craig has not had car pace. Will Davison has gained nine positions. So that's a great run from those guys. Rick Kelly showing form here like we saw in Adelaide. Remember, they got off to a good start. He came out of Adelaide fourth in the championship and been through some difficult weekends. So he's inside the top 10 position, eight at the moment, Jack Daniels racing. But this is our man in second position. He's six seconds adrift from the leader. Scott McLaughlin just continues to stroll along brilliantly. Been a couple of little reliability gremlins that's hurt these guys championship-wise, but there's been no doubting the speed. That battle in Adelaide, the yeah. commencement of the championship, the Clipsal 500 was absolutely outstanding. Steve Dahlgren just went straight through at turn five as well. Here's the gap second to third. This is Chas Mostert. He's done a good job, Neil. He, he struggled earlier in the week, and remember, on Friday, he wasn't comfortable with the car. He didn't like the amount of wheel movement, instability at centre over the bumps. He's done a great job to respond to that. And the great thing also that we've got to make comment on is that there are five manufacturers within the top seven cars. So great job in terms of those new manufacturers joining our series. So, about 1,500 metres of racetrack remaining now for Mark Winterbottom. Pepsi Max Ford Performance Racing. On that subject of Mostert, comes into this race 18th in the championship, so there'll be valuable points for him, and it equals his performance earlier in the weekend, getting on the podium third. But for this man, he's going to notch up another victory. His second this weekend, and it's career win 26 for Mark Winterbottom. With these sweeping left-handers remaining, threatened at Winton and then improved over the weekend to grab a victory and he's closed out on them again here this weekend with an emphatic performance congratulations well done Mark Winterbottom fourth performance racing and it was exactly 6.9 seconds in the end to Scotty McLaughlin and it'll be Chas Most at home in third there he is beneath the ITM bridge Winterbottom, McLaughlin, Mostert. Van Gisbergen will finish in fourth position. Great job, Michael Caruso. Championship season best. Remember, he went well at the Australian Grand Prix event. Jason Bright, good recovery, sixth. And then Will Davis and Rick Kelly, Fabian Coulthard, and Jamie Wincup, tenth. A long, hard, and hard-fought weekend for all. But for these two very special outcome because the Jason Richards trophy is at stake as well and Mark Winterbottom will win that 268 over 245 very good drive from him over the weekend Neil he's, he's been able to get by guys he's been authoritative with his overtaking he's looked after the tires he's made the car flow very good bounce back in terms of the championship 
and a pretty profound thing on an Anzac commemorative weekend to win the Jason Richards Memorial. That is now the reaction from Ford fans. Fantastic. No shortage of blue in that stand. And Winterbottom bags it up in celebration. Well done, Frosty. So it was a win in race 11 for him here. It was a win in race 9 at Winton on the Sunday. And haven't they found some form all of a sudden? Remember, in the second half of last year's championship, he came on hugely. The start was ropey. It's not the case this year. <laughs> Go, Frosty, and watch the road camber. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> While you're sending smoke signals to the crowd, just be careful where you end up. But also a good result for FPR with first and third there, Neil. As I said, Mostert uncomfortable early in the weekend. Great result for the factory forward team. <laughs> Here he is, unplugs the six-point harness, all the driver cooling kit and the radio. There he is, the man of the moment, Mark Winterbottom. Stretches his championship victory. Congratulations there from Scott McLaughlin. Great sportsmanship, and he wins the Jason Richards Memorial Trophy, does Mark Winterbottom. Super slow mo replay shows the style and poise, balance, and handling of this car and this man at this location. It's been extraordinary, Brett. Barrett's. Hey, Mark Winterbottom, congratulations. Championship leader now by over 100 points. Well done. That's awesome. Uh, what an awesome race. The, uh, the car was really good and, um, yeah, made a bit of a bodgy start and, and uh, trucked on through. And my crew got me in front, which was awesome. And uh, from there, we just trucked on. And 100 point lead, that's, that's really cool. I wanted to lead going away, not just last night. So, uh, yeah, that's awesome. I'm wrapped. And the news gets better. You've got the Jason Richards trophy as well. Well done. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. That's the, uh, that's the cool part. And uh, very, very special guy. And I feel honoured to win it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a proud moment. Enjoy the podium. Well done, Frosty. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. And Scott McLaughlin, Scotty, what an incredible weekend for you. Did you ever dream coming into this weekend how well it would go for you? Mate, uh, two poles, you know, and uh, we didn't win, but um, I had a lot of support from the fans and I really appreciate it. I mean, it's uh, a huge thing for me. I used to watch Murph on the Hill and I used to cheer him on. And now I've got a whole heap of people cheering me on, so I really appreciate it. And they will for a long time to come. Congratulations, Scott. Enjoy the podium. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Thanks. Chaz Mostert, speaking of dream weekends, wow, second trip to the podium this weekend. Congratulations. Yeah, but this time I get to sh um, spray champagne, so it's much better. Um, fantastic Pepsi Max crew this weekend's been awesome. Frosty's been setting the pace, and um, yeah, we also got car six up there. How fantastic is that? So we'll go up there, spray each other with champagne, all the crew, because they deserve it. They've been working hard. We've had a bit of a slow start the season, but we're back, so we're ready to go. Off you go, Chaz. Enjoy it. Thank you. Down here, Will Davis, hot and bothered, fresh out of the car, mate. Sorry, mate, I know how you must feel when you get out of a battle like that. Picked up nine spots for position seven in the Mercedes, mate. You must be wrapped. That's a good, strong effort from you guys. I actually am. Um, it's one of those races where, you, like, you, for me, I punched a fist when I crossed the line because it was the maximum we could do. There was no safety cars at a track where it's so hard to pass. Um, you know, thanks to Luke and um, my engineer for the, you know, strategy. Um, coming in lap one, um, we knew we were going to need real good tie life to make that work. And... You know, we just pushed, pushed the car. It was a good step forward. I wish we could qualify again now because it's actually where we need it. Well, but did you set out on that strategy at the beginning? I mean, it was quite a clever one. We thought at the start it was good. It jumped you some positions, but you still had a big fuel load to put in later. So you had to make some runs then. Well, we needed speed. We needed consistency. We needed a big race from me out on my own, racing myself. And, uh, you know, unless I got a Banzai uh, rocket start where I was going to make up four or five spots, that was always the strategy. And those races are really hard because every tenth, you know the guys are going to start funneling out and you know you've just got to maximise everything you got and hopefully sneak out in front. And um, it was a lot. It was actually a lot of fun. It was frustrating because I wanted to be on that tyre strategy, all those guys, because I actually had a car to fight with then. But um, anyway, promising, great points, great result for Erebus. And um, yeah, bring on Perth. We're learning all the time. Good on you, mate. Very happy for you. Cheers. Thanks. <laughs> It was a great job, wasn't it? Will Davison finishing in seventh position, having qualified 16th. And here's the confirmation of those unofficial results for you. It was nearly a seven-second margin for Winterbottom and McLaughlin. Mostert in third position for Ford Performance Racing. The good news, the podium set. Here's Barretts.
race 13 of our year. Time to congratulate our winners. And would you please give a big round of applause in first place, Ford Pepsi Max crew, Mark Winterbottom. In second place, Valvoline Racing, GRM, Scott McLaughlin. And in third place, Ford Pepsi Max crew, Chas Mostert. Representing our winning team, Ford Pepsi Max crew, is Jason Gray. Yeah. Making the presentation of the third place trophy is John Moen, store owner from ITM. Yeah. Presenting to second place is David McConnell, chairman of AT. Yeah. Making the presentation to the winning team is Tony Haydock, store owner, Manawatu ITM. And presenting the first place trophy to our winner is the Minister of Local Government, Paula Bennett. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2014 ITM 500 Auckland Race 13 winners. And a great and shot. And the winner, driver of the Jason Richards Memorial Trophy, would you please congratulate from Ford Pepsi Max crew, Mark Winterbottom. Making the presentation of the Jason Richards Trophy is Wally Story from Brad Jones Racing. What a great scene there for everybody from Ford Performance Racing. Renee Winterbottom grabbing a shot as well. Here's the championship points situation and it's 107 points between Mark Winterbottom and Craig Lowndes. Fabian Coulthard in third position, James Courtney in fourth. And what a turnaround over the weekend. Fantastic performance of the boys at FPR, one and three in this race. Well done. So let's check out the highlights now. Race number 13. Today's 200 kilometre race, supposed to be 70 <laughs> laps, but it was quickly turned into 69 with a problem with Tim Slade, who eventually did get underway with a snag with the clutch on this car. And how wild was that start with Dave Reynolds down the inside of the two FPR Falcons? Big spin there for Dahlgren at turn four. It's an amazing place. And this guy has been so competitive all weekend. Scott McLaughlin, a little bump there with Fabian Coulthard and Rick Kelly at one of the wildest spots on this layout. You can see there the amount of oversteer, this great shot that we had on board with Scott McLaughlin and them bumps in the body language of the cars. Nowhere do we see this stuff. At the stop, we saw the brakes locked. We saw a, a mirror change there for Winterbottom, and that was the key thing. He was jumped in the pits, and have a look at this moment for David Reynolds in the Bottolo Falcon. Big lock up there for Fabian Coulthard. Comes back on in front of Courtney. And then this drama with Winkup and Perkat. Bang into the Pepsi Max sign. Mark Dutton looking on. It's been a shocking weekend for Red Bull Racing. Great job, Scott McLaughlin. And that is a superb performance by Mark Winterbottom. Well, well done, Frosty. Adding to that tally of career wins for him. Very popular with the crowd and the winner of the Jason Richards Memorial Trophy.